Joel Taggart here sitting in for Stephen on Thursday. The Stephen Nolan Show, very busy programme to pack into this BBC podcast. A real mix of topics, favourite comedians, the decline of the teapot, but we'll start with a more serious issue. And after journalist Rod Little wrote a column having a go at people who, in his opinion, had newly invented illnesses, we heard from listeners who live day to day with those problems, like M.E., Do you know someone that suffers with ME? At the start of the week, that illness came up after we talked to the journalist Rod Little. He'd written an article attacking people who falsely claim benefits. In his Sun column, he said it was far easier to be disabled these days than ever before. But he then went on to have a go at people who, in Rod's opinion, had newly invented illnesses which make you a bit peaky for decades. I think one of the reasons... it's my, my suspicion is, and I don't have any science uh, to support this, but my guess is that one of the reasons that the number of people claiming to be disabled has gone up so swiftly in the last 10 and particularly 20 years is that there are now two very vague, vaguely defined illnesses, and both of them are vaguely defined, uh, which people can claim to have. Whether or not they have them or not is a different issue, and that's fibromyalgia and uh, uh, ME. Well, since we talked to Rod, we've had a, a lot of people with ME contacting the show. Jacqueline's son has suffered from ME for three years. Horace also suffers from ME. They're, they're both on the line this morning. Uh, Jacqueline, when you first heard those comments, I mean, how horrified were you? We were absolutely disgusted as parents. That is so, so untrue. And it's insult to us as parents and carers and to our child's illness. Uh, do you think it's a, a, a reflection on how people view ME? Do you think it's a, a, a widely held viewpoint or do, or do you think Rod Little is in a minority here? Well, I think the, way, uh, the awareness has raised significantly now. But like us as parents knew nothing about ME until three years ago. And I think, to be honest, that man needs to go and educate himself because at the minute he's been quite ignorant till suffers. How difficult is it day to day living with Emmy? Well, our child, he's almost 12 now. He's in constant pain, extreme tiredness. He's unable to attend school. He's bedridden a lot of the time. He has loss of memory. Um, it's a very lonely illness. Now, we have been advised now that, you know, maybe to help uh, with his learning. Now, his learning would be to complete the alphabet at nearly 12 years of age to a child that could do all this to maybe get an iPad that, you know, he could use it rather than having to even make the effort to write. And, you know, our child was a dancer. He was a singer. He was a performer. He loved life. A great popular child within the school to be struck down with this horrible condition. And... Um, I mean uh, when did you realise that that was the case, that, that your 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 son was suffering from ME? And, and was it difficult for you to, to get your head around it? It was very difficult. Um, he was admitted to hospital with a virus and released maybe three, four days later, three years ago in January. And eight weeks later, we were still taking him to a doctor because we were still, still so concerned about his energy. He was sleeping a lot of the time. Uh, he was having to be carried about. His appetite had gone. He'd lost so much weight. And we went then uh, to see a paediatrician who told us that it would um, be a, a process that he'd have to go through to check, you know, every other thing. Um, after a year, we were actually diagnosed a year later in the following January that this is what I, he had was ME. And then, you know, because things are so poor for us at the moment, we actually had to contact the Times Trust in England, who have a doctor who specialises in ME. And we um, had to go and see this doctor. We were lucky that he met us in Dublin um, to see our child. And he diagnosed our child with classical severe ME. And up until that, we never knew anyone with ME. Um, how could our child imagine to be sick for three years? How could he play a game like that for three years? I would invite yourself, anyone, and Rod Little, to come to our home and see our child. And maybe then he will realise that he has been outspoken in this manner and that this is an illness and it's a very debilitating illness.
that our child has. Jacqueline, what's your son's name? Andrew. Uh, uh, Andrew. How how does Andrew himself cope with it? Do, do, does he does he let it get get him down? I mean, how how does it actually affect him on a day to day basis in terms of even what what he's able to do and his interaction with, with his friends? Does does he see that his his friends are are doing things maybe that he doesn't do, or, or how does how does it manifest itself for him day to day? Well, um, we have to carry him to the toilet. We have to shower him. Um, he's now in a wheelchair, uh, but we try to maintain a family life. He's not he's not the only child in our home. He's the youngest, good enough, but he's not the only child. A child uh, very close to him. Um, we try to encourage him to eat, to stay strong, to be positive. You know, and you know we don't like the doom and gloom. You know, we we prevent him from, uh, I'd say, a lot of the information that is available um, about this illness because we our hope is still out there that there is going to be a cure and like. We as parents, like like any other sufferers and parents out there, are raising money for our own research for to try and get a cure to this illness. I don't want my child to be receiving DLA, no harm to Rod Little. I would prefer my child to have his life back. Money's not everything to us. Your health is your wealth. Horace, you're, you're a long-time sufferer from ME. Do, do you think awareness is changing? or uh, did, did you think that... Um, the remarks maybe that, that Rod Little made were, were, were a thing of the past? No. Um, we, we get a fair deal from the press, usually. We get a fair deal from the politicians, but there's a sector uh, of the medical profession uh, who are sceptical uh, about ME. Uh, so the, ki- the kind of things Rod was saying, uh, Rod can get worse than that. Uh, in The Spectator, he called ME patients malingering mentals. Uh, so... Uh, uh, Rod was perpetrating the kind of stigma which comes from a, a section uh, of, of the doctors that it's not that we don't have a physical illness, that we're imagining it, that we're, uh, that we're malingering, and actually that we're mentally ill. Now, those attitudes are not going away. <clears throat> so, uh, like I say, we get a fair deal from the politicians, from the press, and from the general public, but the rock we always hit is, is the, the medical uh, scepticism. And I imagine, Horace, if, if, if you're a long-time sufferer, that uh, awareness whenever you were first diagnosed w- would have been a lot less than what it is now. And, and perhaps when you were trying to explain to people that, that you had ME, that perhaps they were even more sceptical than what some people are now. I was very fortunate in that I was diagnosed quickly and uh, was referred to a doctor who was very good at managing ME. But uh, I... I I was uh, in a minority. Uh, still today, uh, it's, it's, uh, there is no, there is almost no medical expertise in ME uh, within Northern Ireland. So, um, I listened to uh, the autism, uh, the parents of autism kids there uh, earlier in your program, uh, how difficult it was for them uh, to access services. Well, at least services exist uh, for some neurological conditions. Uh, for ME in Northern Ireland, there is no specialist service. Therefore. Uh, it's very hard even to get a diagnosis, and then after that, it's it's uh, uh, impossible nearly to get a doctor who knows how to manage the thing properly. Uh, too often, uh, you run into the uh, medical prejudice and the medical lack of knowledge, uh, and then wh- when you access the, if you're an ME patient and you access uh, the NHS in Northern Ireland. Uh, you find that instead of instead of uh, doctors and nurses and physiotherapists doing you good, uh, they do you harm. Uh, they they don't know the condition, uh, and they they're not inclined to find out about it. So uh, I have found that that they they don't. There are official NHS uh, clinical guidelines laid down for the treatment of ME, but but, but doctors and nurses uh, don't even bother reading them. Horace, if I could. 